Right now, there are literally hundreds of articles coming out. I'm, I'm scanning over the headlines. The Atlantic that attacked me yesterday saying I was a kook for questioning the bin Laden kill. Now their editor comes out with the slippery story of the bin Laden kill. Drudge has it linked up at Drudge Report. And it just goes through the fact that uh, people are not buying it. Um, seven out of ten calls, I actually was sitting there driving in my car with a piece of paper doing the four lines and the fifth line through it counting. Seven out of ten callers, national, local, are not buying it. A complete rout uh, has begun. Dr. Pachinik, for those that just joined us, is the... Uh, is the Jack Ryan, of course, uh, of uh, the Patriot Games, uh, th that character from the books of Tom Clancy, uh, you know, uh, really spy master, overthrowing governments, running assassinations, uh, you name it, uh, working in five administrations. Sir, what do you make of the fact that this is starting to blow up in their face? Is there any danger in them now trying to pull some even more ridiculous rabbit out of a hat? How could this escalate? Well, this can escalate very quickly by what you saw, that, in fact, we're going to increase our, our terrorist watch. We're going to suppress the American public more. We're going to have more security. But, in fact, I have more faith in our military, particularly the Army, than I do in our civilian government. I have faith in men like General Petraeus, other generals who I will not mention, where the Army will not tolerate this type of behavior by civilians who are really inept. And really what's happening is uh, the quicker that General Petraeus gets into the CIA and is able to take control of this so-called intelligence uh, uh, apparatus, which really has not been functional. As I told you, 850,000 of these intel boys in counterterrorism have top secret. They're all making money. It's become a big business. One of my close general friends said to me, the greatest uh, uh, weapon of mass destruction is these centers for counterterrorism. Think of that. The standards wow. for counterterrorism are the greatest dangers. Of the so I'm not as afraid because the American public is going to resist it. They're going to say, uh, you know, F you, fire up. And they're going to, they should stand up and say, that's enough. We don't have the attacks. Uh, the attacks did not occur for 30 years. It only occurred after Bush and Cheney created an attack in 9-11. And then they made it this absurd psyops that said, since 9-11, we haven't had an attack. Yeah, we've had attacks. We've had attacks by basically a security force that never existed, the TSA, for Hamland, Homeland Security, which is a, a misnomer, run by an, a, a woman a, 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 a woman from Arizona who barely could run Arizona in her own border. And now you have incompetency on steroids. So what you really have to do now is to watch our own military say, in effect, quietly, cease and desist to our civilians. I know Obama cannot handle our military. I know, in fact, that Obama is surrounded by sycophants from Chicago, all of whom are ex-Chicago, you know, convicts, pre-convicts, ex-convicts with questionable histories. Uh, you know what it does? I'm very happy when he attacks me or you because it opens up, uh, it opens up daily, it's brothers. It opens up exactly what they did in Chicago. And you, quite frankly, they're messing with the wrong guy. You know, they really don't understand. I'm not that special. I'm just another American who will not tolerate the BS of, a, of an organization that's corrupt, deceptive. And at the same time, what they're going to do is they're going to ramp up their ineffectualness and dysfunctionalism. What happens, in effect, if you're not good at telling a lie, you're not going to be good at reversing that lie because you're going to be on, uh, continuously on threading these lies by saying, well, that's not the picture. I mean, it's absurd. It becomes so comical that Obama becomes nothing more than an iconic picture of stupidity, incompetence, dysfunctionalism, and self-aggrandizement, which is really what's happening. And he knows that. And he's getting very pissed off every time I'm saying that because it's going right into the White House. And he knows guys like me who had been to the schools that he's been to, and then some, will not tolerate the nonsense he came forth with and made believe that he was that important, that smart. He is not that important. He's not that smart. He's really quite incompetent and has never All accomplished right. anything in his life. So I want the mechanics, the truck drivers, the doctors, every one of us to stand up and say, we've had enough. And I want us to go after Mr. John Yu, who went in the front page of the New York Times, the man who wrote, a South Korean naturalized in America who wrote, the Patriots Act, five weeks before we had 9-11, and wrote in the memorandum 
that we should have torture of our terrorists, so-called terrorists, Mr. Yu, who I attacked on September 12th because I already picked up what he had done. He was unpatriotic, un-American. He has criminal charges against him. He's at the University of Berkeley, and I want the students at Berkeley to protest his presence and refuse to accept the legal degree because he's a lawyer there who's tenured at University of Berkeley, a liberal school run by the Chancellor of Robert Bergino, a Canadian who'd been at MIT for 25 years. This is the beginning of the unraveling and counterbalancing what was happening in 9-11 and the absurdity. John, you came on the front page of the New York Times and said, we are justified in the Bush administration for torturing. Well, John, you should be tortured and should be put in prison so that he understands what happened. I want your public to go in and see John Yu, Y-O-O, and see how many charges have been pressed against him and how now the University of Berkeley, the great liberal school in California, California at Berkeley, has retained him as a, a tenured professor, and I want the chancellor to fire him. And if the chancellor doesn't, I would like Jerry Brown, the governor, to All fire right. the chancellor because there's no excuse. All right, I want to go further, My though. The day of retribution comes back nine years later, my friend. Well, well doctor, doctor, the they're obviously yes, scared. I mean, a bunch of the torturers went to prison, but then Bush wrote a book last year saying he ordered torture. He'd do it again. Rumsfeld's out promoting it. They're trying to resuscitate torture, lying and saying that torture, uh, enhanced interrogation, rough interrogation as they Orwellian whitewash it, led to the killing of bin Laden. Then the White House comes out and says, actually, Torture didn't lead to this. KSM, of course, confessed to bombing buildings that were built after he was already captured and spent you know, many years of torture and mind control uh, at Gitmo. So expanding on that, are they trying to resuscitate torture because if they can sell our troops on doing that, they can have an army of darkness? Or is it more about trying to not end up down the road going to prison for what they've done? I think it's more about ending up in, uh, not in ending up in prison. They're too cowardly. Those people who uh, uh, espoused it, Bush Jr. and Cheney, who's never been in the Army. Cheney refused to serve our country eight times. Do you know that? An alcoholic who was kicked out of Yale for alcoholism was sent to University of Wisconsin, and his wife, the great neocon, who decided to get uh, pregnant on the ninth time. Eight times I told my general he refused to go to the Army, but he didn't have a problem sending our troops into war. And he said the Vietnam War was not my kind of war. So you're talking about the chicken hawks. These guys should be in prison, should be indicted. But more importantly, you, who wrote that memorandum, should be thrown out, license taken away. But more importantly, what, uh, what uh, Obama's trying to do is to cover up for Bush Jr. So that there's a story, a narrative that seems very consistent, which is absolutely absurd. Torture does not work. I've been in the field 30 years, never had to torture anyone. Never had to touch them, never had to do anything but sit down. And any detective and any policeman in any town knows the following. You sit down, you have a smoke, you have a drink together, you talk, you get a lot more information than torturing. Waterboarding does not work. But if they're not convinced, I'd be happy to waterboard Donald Rumsfeld so that he can explain how he did 9-11. I'd be happy to waterboard Cheney to explain how he did 9-11. I'd waterboard Wolfowitz for 9-11 since he's a coward. And Elliot Abrams, who's the Council on Foreign Relations, and he is a total coward, who was also involved in Honduras and Nicaragua and the Contra affair, he's never been held accountable. So we have all of these people who have never been held accountable coming back again like, uh, like sewage. We have a backup of a sewage system. And now the garbage owner is Obama, and he's just stirring the pot to make sure that everybody gets to be light, and everybody has a narrative that's consistent with suppression, oppression, and he gets reelected. The Republicans are no better, believe me. They are just pathetic. If you look at the entire field, they have nothing to say except platitudes. Well, the main, the, uh, doctor, uh, and again, we're talking the real-life Jack Ryan folks, you know, co-wrote the books with Clancy, uh, wrote the modern black op uh, system uh, canons that are used, and he's here basically spilling uh, the reality out for people because we're in such crisis, a crisis because the elite like Nero uh, or Caligula uh, is going insane. And they are just putting out more and more bizarre lies. What about the childish media that keeps saying, well, why would Bush 
and not do the fake killing of bin Laden? And then why would Obama, as if they're fighting with each other, when both parties continue to cover up for the crimes of the last administration, and this is all part of that continuity of the military-industrial complex, and then... And then well, I want to get into the point. understand what it means to be a news reporter or an anchor person. Number one, in order to get information, you have to be egregious to access yourself to the individual you want to write about. So from the very beginning, the media wants to portray itself as an adversary, but really what they are are sycophants. If you look at the entire dynamic of the media, which I rarely talk to the press. As it's you fake know, fights. Sometimes. Fake fights. They're total sycophants. They basically will call up and say, oh, would you please talk to me really on the record, off the record. You really can play games with the media, and I've done it, where I've had three different quotations all done by myself, off on, on the record, off the background, deep background. So you play games with them. In the PSYOPs world, we play games with them. In the world of Obama, he needs it in order to feed his ego because he has nothing else. There's nothing else to manipulate except the people in the media who become the news itself. So you have the very personalities in the media talking about themselves and the people of America getting sick. It's egregious. We're getting sick. I don't want to see every one of them. They have nothing to say. Most of them have never really done anything except read a teleprompter. Having said that, however, there are very brave journalists. I do want to... Hey, Anderson Cooper did a very great job in Egypt. The people at CNN, when they were in Tahrir Square, really sacrificed their lives on the line. But for the most part, there are certain guys like Bernie, Bernie Gortzman and others whom I've known who've been really brave, who've gotten out in the field, but those days are gone. All right, Doc, Doc, one final segment. Stay there. Amazing.